Hi, um, I'm Gareth Herschel. I am one of the analysts in the data and analytics research team, and I am the lead author for the keynote for the 2022 Data and Analytics Summit. Um, the theme this year is transforming uncertainty and unleashing innovation. Um, and so a lot of the keynote is going to focus in around those topics of what does uncertainty mean in our world? And what does innovation mean? And how are we responsible for managing, deploying, um, and being innovative in the world of data and, and analytics? So where I started with this was to say, you know, let's look at where we've come in the last few years, because we've come a long way in clearing up some of the uncertainty that used to pervade our world. Right? We know that digital transformation requires data and analytics, right? Data and analytics is at the heart of a digital transformation. And over the last few years, as organizations have been transforming themselves and transforming what they're doing, they've relied much more heavily on data and analytics. Data and analytics has been one of the highest growth areas uh, of investment for organizations over the last few years, because we needed to know what was going on. We needed to be able to see what was coming. Um, so data and analytics is at the heart of our digital transformation. Uh, we know that everything is moving to the cloud, right? A few years ago, there were debates about what types of data might move to the cloud, whether or not the cloud would become relevant in certain markets, in certain geographies. Um, there was a lot of concern, frankly, about putting data in the cloud. And I would say that that's really gone. Right, that's really disappeared. You know, it's a very rare organization now that has significant reservations still about putting data in the cloud because of you know, security concerns and things like that. So our applications have moved to the cloud, our data has moved to the cloud, our analysis has moved to the cloud. Cloud is pervasive. Um, even something like AI, right? We've been talking about AI for the last 30 years, 40 years. Um, and it's always been this kind of weird science experiment or dystopian science fiction movie. Um, but now it's actually delivering real business value, right? Now we know that AI is a thing. AI, depending on, you know, how you want to define it, right? AI is possible, right? AI is something that's becoming an integral part of the way many organizations make decisions today. So these uncertainties are going away. And we could say, okay, things are becoming clearer, right? Now we understand what's going on, but I think they're being replaced by new uncertainties. Right? So we say we're moving to the cloud, but what does that mean? Right? What about hybrid cloud? What about multi-cloud? How do I balance different types of cloud environment? How do I reconcile my you know, cloud apps environment from my cloud data environment from the analytic tools that I have going on in the cloud? So the, the world of the cloud isn't just as simple as saying we've moved to the cloud. There's a lot of uncertainty still in there. And I think that's the situation that we are today is we, We've cleared up some uncertainties, but we've replaced them with others and probably more of them than we had before. I would say that we are in what I might call an era of perpetual uncertainty, right? Things are never going to be as stable as they were. Things will never be as stable in the future, even as they are today, right? The world we are in is evolving and is rapidly evolving, rapidly changing and bringing with it new questions, new uncertainties that we have to deal with as an organization. So if you're waiting for like this phase to pass, it won't. We have to get rid, to, we have to get used to the idea that this is the new normal, right? The new normal is there is no normal anymore. Things are always changing. But I think that gives us an opportunity because your uncertainty implies a mandate for change. If the world around us is changing, the expectation is that we should change as well, right? So no matter if you're a very conservative organization or a very successful organization, you still have that need to continually improve in order to maintain you know, your performance in order to maintain your relevance. Let's take um, Formula One as, as my new favorite example. I really sucked into Formula One uh, over the last uh, little while. Um, and one of the, the, the data points, one of the things that really stuck with me was this idea that the car that wins the first race of the season, right, the fastest car uh, of all of the participants, if they don't continuously improve, by the time the last race of the season comes around, they will be dead last. Those teams 
that industry recognizes that the uncertainty, the challenge that they face is how to continually improve. They know they need to do it. Now that continuous improvement means innovation. And that's where one of the themes for the summit comes in. The idea of innovation, how are we innovative in our use of data and analytics, as well as how are we innovative with data and analytics, right? How does, how does data and analytics make us a more innovative organization? So we need to think about innovation. And one of the things that I'd really like you to, 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 to think about or to acknowledge is that innovation is not the same as creativity. Very often we, limp, we kind of lump those two together or we conflate the two, right? Innovation, creativity, it's the same thing. The distinction I think is really important to draw is that creativity is coming up with an idea, right? It's coming up with a new thought, a new idea. Innovation is making that new idea happen, right? So innovation is creativity plus execution, right? Innovation is creativity plus the ability to take that idea and operationalize it and deploy it and make it deliver business impact. So we can't just be talking about creativity we have to be talking about innovation. And that means a much broader lens, a much broader view of how data and analytics can help. Right? It means not just using data and analytics to come up with ideas, but to make sure those ideas really have impact, really are useful and used by the organization. So what does that mean? And especially in the context of uncertainty, because I think one way to think about this is that data or data and analytics transforms our ability to understand the world around us, right? It gives us visibility into that world around us. And visibility transforms uncertainty, right? If I don't know something, then it's very difficult for me to understand it, right? There's a lot of uncertainty there. Let me give you an, another a, a kind of an example or a way of thinking about this. Think about poker and think about chess. Right? What's the difference between those two? And then, you know, there's thousands of differences. But it, in a game of poker, you can't see the other person's cards. There's uncertainty there, right? You don't know what cards they're holding. You know what cards you've got. You know what cards are on the table in front of you, but you don't know what cards they have. There's uncertainty. A game of chess, there's still uncertainty. You don't know what the opponent's strategy is, but all of the pieces are there on the table in front of you. There's no secrets. There's no hidden pieces. There's nothing there. Everything you need to know about the game is right there, apart from the uncertainty about what the other player is thinking. And I think that idea is a useful kind of metaphor for us to use around data and analytics, because data and analytics enables us to transform our understanding of our environment, right? It brings us visibility, and visibility transforms uncertainty. So let me talk about three key changes that we see in terms of what data and analytics means to us. The first one is that we need smart data, not big data. Right? We've gotten lazy in terms of just the ability to capture all this data and all this data is flooding at us, all this data is available and we just capture all of it. Even if we don't know really what we're doing with it, right? Even if we're not sure what value it might have, we still get in this habit of kind of capturing all of it. So what we really need to think about is how do we become smarter with our data, right? How do we make sure the data we're collecting is really giving us new insights it's teaching us something new about the world around us. And a couple of things we can think about there, one is extending the reach of our senses, right? So often a lot of the data we have is relatively close in. It's the data that's in our operational systems that are already data enabled. They're already used to capturing and generating data. Now what we have is the ability to get data from the very edge, right? IoT devices, sensor devices, data from the edge or data from other organizations, data from third-party organizations, part of our ecosystem. So now we have the ability to extend the reach of our data way beyond our traditional core systems into those very edge systems and into our ecosystem to collect data, insights, understanding, visibility from there. The other big change in the world of, of data and smart data is this idea that we can create our own data, right? We can create new graph-enabled metadata you know, better understanding of the data that we have in our organization and how it relates to itself. We can create synthetic data. We can create data that is a synthetic, um, but uh, kind of a, a proxy for real data. 
it's not actual data, it's not personally identifiable information, it's not data that's gonna have privacy implications, it's data that enables us to do that kind of analysis without falling foul of privacy concerns, without the need to go out and collect large amounts of that specific types of data. So synthetic data is gonna be transformational to our understanding of our world around us um, by being uh, you know, more easily accessible. Second change, so I talked about data, then I'll talk about the analysis, then I'll talk about decisions. Analysis is gonna be key because with augmented analytics, we have the chance to accelerate our understanding of the world around us, right? We can understand situations rapidly, changing situations much more quickly than we could before. We can understand what's significant about that changing situation much more easily than we could before. So we have this ability now to understand and accelerate the insight creation process for our organization. We can also share it more broadly across our organization, and that's a key part of making data valuable, is by enabling us to influence decisions throughout our organization. Doing analysis is not enough, just like having data is not enough. If they're really gonna be impactful, they have to influence decisions. And that will be the third key change that we see in the market today, is this ability to influence decisions and the way that we can start to use data and analysis to influence those decisions. Things like natural language generation, natural language query, automated storytelling, data visualization, all of these techniques enabling us to begin to influence decisions and reach decision holders uh, or decision makers uh, in ways that we haven't before. So we've talked about uncertainty. We've talked about the need for continuous improvement. We've talked about how new data, new analysis, and a focus on decision-making will enable us to make our world more comprehensible. The last point I wanna make is around how we change our thinking. Because one size does not fit all. But too often our data governance and data and analytics governance initiatives have behaved as if there's one style of governance that is applicable for all of our data, for all of our analysis, for all of our decision-making. And it's really important that we think about concepts like adaptive governance, where we have different styles of governance for use in different types of situation. We do have control-based governance for things like regulated data, for secure data, you know, for data privacy. But we also have data that enables innovation, enables agility, enables automated um, governance, because that enables us to fit the right style of governance for the right style of decision-making. So that's how we begin to unleash innovation across our organization, is by removing some of the governance constraints that are frankly have been overly engineered to a lowest common denominator, and instead think about how they're relevant in different situations. The last point I wanna make is, to me, one of the most interesting, which is the idea of how we remove our mental constraints. So much of what constrains us as humans, as individuals, as employees, even as organizations, are the mental constraints that we've built around ourselves, right? Ways of thinking and habits of thought. And the question is, how do we get rid of some of those? So what I'd like to propose to you is think about the power of, or think about the impact of how you define data and analytics, right? What's the metaphor that you apply to it, right? For a while, we heard about data and analytics as the new oil. That's kind of an, okay, it's an interesting, you know, in certain ways that metaphor is interesting, is helpful to us. But it's really important that we think about data and analytics in as many different ways as possible. So let me give you just two pairs to think about as we end here. Data and analytics is a science, right? We hear a lot about data science. Data and analytics is an art. How would you think about data and analytics differently when you think of it as a science versus when you think of it as an art? Right? If you think of it as a science, then there's processes, there's controls, there's management of that, there's the ability to engineer to an optimal solution, potentially. Whereas if you think of it as an art, then it's about creativity, it's about experimentation, it's about failure. That also ties to science, but in a different way. So now we can think about data as an art versus data as a science. What about the idea of data and analytics as a factory versus data and analytics as a forest or as an ecosystem? If you think of data and analytics as a factory, it's very process driven, it's very rigid, right? We're always trying to optimize to the, th flow put, the throughput of ideas and concepts through that process. Whereas if we think of it as an ecosystem, 
we think of it as a forest, then it becomes this way of understanding that everything is connected to everything else, that things can't move too far out of balance or the ecosystem collapses, that we need to nurture next generation of things, even as the older generations provide shade and provide comfort, provide cover for that next generation. So thinking about data and analytics in different ways gives you permission to be innovative, gives you permission to unleash those mental shackles and apply data and analytics however you choose to deliver innovation and remove or at least transform uncertainty. Thank you.